One. Hello, Hello guys, guys, and welcome, welcome to, to the Women's Game. Really? You have the branding now, Jay. Oh, I'm God. amazing. I'm amazing. Stop I'm amazing. I'm Jay. <laughs> and as you guys can see, we are totally not in our studio. If somebody was gracious enough to let us borrow their beautiful backgrounds. That was awesome of them. Let's yeah, just be was. honest. <laughs> and I'm Lenona. Oh, yeah, I remember. Oh, oh my high God. Five. High five. Five. Me. Yes. Professional. Okay, so we are the women of the women. With the ladies of the women's cave and also the and i thought ladies and we wrote a bunch of books and i thought the voice was bad with other life lessons and i thought being grown up was easy and i thought i could juggle it all and i thought i had it i did my journey alone sorry and i thought i had it all figured out you guys i'm not on location so you, you know i'm on location right <laughs> We Maybe don't. This coffee has a little bit more stuff. Yeah, it's nothing like it's nothing like better than Irish coffee in the morning. We're I can't joking. <laughs> it's better than Irish coffee. It's just coffee. It's just Irish coffee. It's a lot. Hello, coffee. <laughs> Use a lot. Anyway, <laughs> Hollywood. I need to be more famous. Yes, I have my own reality TV show, but I need to be more famous. So take the script, have the actor say it, don't change a thing, and make a TV show for me. She's Thank joking, you, you guys. I'm so so joking. For real, and that's a lie. Please don't call that. Oh, yes. And we also have the workbook in case yes. you wanted to improve yourself or your business. There you go. Woo! That was fun. <laughs> that was long. And it, it was, was long. long. <laughs> but we have a lot of ladies in the ladies' cave today, in the women's cave. Why did I call it the ladies' cave? What in the world is going on with my mouth today? And the women's cave. You forgot something. What did I? Oh, Just Writing Life. You can check that out and everything that we do on andwethought.com the books and everything amazon.com and barnesandnobles.com yeah i forgot to make money what is wrong with me today and on the ladies tab go all the way down to the tippity bottom yes tippity bottom is my word and you will find all the charities we proudly support also you guys inspirational women and literature conference is coming up so please 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 Look buy tickets to either show up in person in california or to buy, to buy a ticket to show up virtually. Is that everything we have to say? Yes, I think it's everything. Ooh, That's right. I think we got it done in less than two minutes. Less than two minutes. Okay, so we have all these wonderful, beautiful ladies here today. So, Brandy, would you like to introduce yourself? <laughs> yeah, I'm Brandy Miller of 40daywriter.com, the chief executive storyteller. I'm also the uh, hostess of Behind the Covers podcast, where we peel back those covers to reveal what it really takes an author to get from concept to publication and beyond. And eventually, I will be the producer of the 40 Day Writer reality TV show where 40 writers will compete over 40 days to finish, polish, and pitch their books to publishers who will then compete Shark Tank style for the rights to produce those works. Woohoo! Amazing! <laughs> yes, and Jay made it back in time to say, oh, Amazing! <laughs> okay, so Nicole? Hi. Uh, I'm, I don't know how to. Is it showing me? I'm Nicole. Um, I I am a romance author, and um, my kind of tagline is that I like to write um, steamy slow burn romance with strong women and the alpha heroes that are brave enough to chase them. Ooh. I know. I love the website. It's amazing. And you needed to say highly recommended romance writer. I mean, she has like a hundred and some reviews on Amazon. Uh. <laughs> Can I have some? <laughs> uh. I'll send you one. Um, Paige. Hi, everybody. I'm Paige Ingle, and I am a travel writer by trade. However, my passion is helping other people become best-selling authors. Um, to date, I've had 21 uh, best-selling authors, number one best-selling authors, of which uh, 19 of those were Amazon and two of those were New York Times bestselling authors that have worked with me. So I help authors build their platforms both online and off so that there are people to buy their books um, when their books are finally published and it's not just their mom and their grandma. So that's <laughs> a little bit about me and I own a travel boutique company to Paris. So that's it. And see, one day she's gonna help us get on New York best time. For free, right? Pro bono. Right? Pro bono. It pro has bono. to be pro bono. <laughs> <laughs> no, <we're> so <laughs> pro bono. Oh, okay. 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 <laughs> that was our joke. I'm sorry, yeah. you guys. Um, and then Tara. I'm here. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> As usual, I had my little te technical difficulties, but uh, so happy to join you guys this morning. We're so happy to have you. It's been too long. I'm sorry. What are you doing your name? I'm about to go into a full-on personal conversation. <laughs> uh, 
Um, yes, my name is Tara Woods Turner, and I'm so happy to uh, to join you guys today. Um, oh gosh, laundry list. Uh, I am uh, an author. I am an etiquette consultant. I am a very proud uh, member of the uh, author community on both Amazon and Goodreads. Uh, very proud, self-published indie author. I've been fortunate enough to uh, work with um, countless authors um, on helping to build their platform, helping to build their brand. Uh, I've been able to work with authors on, especially uh, my my love is helping to build uh, really strong, effective author websites, which as you know, is a very important part of branding. Um, just, I could go on and on, but- uh, Oh, let's not, let us, let us not also forget, you were the former host of Books and- Books and Company, that's right. Um, yes. As that, yes. you, you, you can tell- Hopefully, you, former and future. <laughs> yes, <laughs> future. future. She knew she was on hiatus. Yes, yes, on hiatus. Coming back, you guys. <laughs> yes, uh, a wonderful opportunity to, um, to talk with not only authors, but, but readers about this, this love affair we have with the, with the printed word. I think as authors, which um, most all of us are, or at least some way connected with the writing world, it's, it's easy to forget that we wouldn't even be here if we didn't love to read so much. True. So connecting with, with readers, it, it seems like a given, right? Writers need to talk to readers. To readers. <laughs> right? But uh, Books and Company was a wonderful uh, platform to not only connect with, with writers, but just to simply talk about, you know, why we love to read, what do we love to read, and what draws us to the books uh, that we end up um, loving so much. So, so yeah, yeah. Again, happy to be here. Awesome. So, I'm a, I have, you a, have a question. question. I know I she has a question. question. Well, no, no, always has the question. <laughs> we'll see here. So, this question is for Tara and Paige, and I'm so sorry, you guys. No, right? everyone can it's jump in. Everyone can jump in, but I really wanted to get their perspectives for, on this. You guys have a lot of connection with the readers, uh, like the readers in general, because I mean, you, Paige, made New York best time sellers, and you, Tara, were the host of Books and Company, and you stay in the community a lot on both sides, reading and, uh, and writing, and you've done a ton of reviews. So can you tell us, what are readers looking for this year and to, at the end of 2017 and the beginning of 2018? Um, I'll, I'll take it first because I, I'm actually sure. done what everyone else has to say. So I'll get mine out of the way. Um, one thing that, that writers, <laughs> I find that writers are looking for is specificity, individuality in the narrative. There are so many quote unquote cookie cutter books and novels out there, you know, thanks to, uh, tribe publishers that readers are really looking for something more for something individual. And that's one thing that um indie publishing has opened they've opened that door so wide and you i don't think you'll be able to close it again because people understand that if i am a librarian who lives in the northeast and i like to bake and collect dolls i can find a novel that is geared to me i can find a community of readers and writers that deal with my unique proclivities or situation and that's something that once readers realize, I can find books that speak directly to what I'm into. Um, it's, it's addictive and it's, and it's really hard to go back to books that try to be all things to all people. So I think that's something that readers will continue to seek out and support, um, you know, critically and financially. They want books that speak to their experience. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah. I think it's, it becomes even more important as writers for us to to find our groove to find our niche to find our market because it's better to have 5,000 completely loyal readers than to try to appeal to 20,000 general readers because those readers will reward you with loyalty yeah I would I would I would definitely agree with um, Tyra on that because uh, as far as my authors, I find that a lot of times they have the most success, at least of the last six months, really niching down and reaching out to the community of readers that like what they have to say. So I just recently had an author that 
was writing about meditation and mindfulness and mindset and all of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people in the general public were just like, no one's gonna, you know, nobody wants to really read that and that kind of, well, here's what happened. I mean, she goes to number one in like five different categories. And then of course, because it's such a popular trending topic right now with people like Brene Brown and Gabrielle Bernstein, she, you know, we were able to capitalize on that with her book and she's showing up in searches that she wouldn't have never, you know, showed up in herself. So organically it's helping her reach a new audience. Um, the other trend that I'm also seeing are short reads except for romance and fantasy, um, the short reads are really, really working for people because attention spans are just short now, right? Nobody has time. People want to be able to, you know, if they have to sit at the soccer game, they can pound out a hundred page book, you know, very, very quickly. Uh, so I think that shorter books, generating them into book series is a good, you know, is a really hot trend that's going on right now that people are buying and with all the print on demand options right now and being able to bundle those types of books people are actually generating a lot of additional revenue that they didn't think of before so that's another trend that's going to be popping on brandy you're shaking your head yes <laughs> so brandy take it away <laughs> well and i think that basically what's going to eventually happen is that traditional publishers are going to get smart and stop fighting indie authors and instead, they're going to use indie author as the stable where they pull from to, mm -hmm. to, to basically build their base. Because that would be the smarter route for publishing companies. That way they know that the work has been tested and they can, you know, experiment, find out, does the public really want that? Sure, maybe I don't think so, but if they're buying it in droves, obviously I'm wrong what has stopped traditional publishers from experimenting with work is that they're afraid to invest. They're afraid of losing money because yeah. they did. They were, I mean, seven out of every 10 books that they pick up don't make more than the advance on royalties. They yes, can't right. afford those experiments. So, and, and that's why a lot of the publishing industry started collapsing so fast was they were taking on losses they couldn't afford. So now I think though, Right now, we've got a dynamic where the traditional publishers are fighting with the indie publishers, but I think eventually it's going to settle out to the point where the traditional publishers see the indie authors as friends. You know, oh, this is where you go to prove yourself. Be an indie author first. Learn the business first. Then come talk mm -hmm. to us. You know, when you've figured out how to be a real partner, then come talk to us and we'll invest in you. That's interesting, Brandy. So, so do you see indie authors as being uh, sort of in a prime position to be the canaries in the, in the mind, so to speak. Absolutely. Sort of as, yeah. they're, they're in the best position to get a feel for where the market really is. Well, oh. and a lot of the traditional publishers are, are reaching out to independent publishers mm -hmm. exactly. and, hy and hybrid publishers and saying, Hey, can you consult with us? How are we, you know, how can we reach, this you know vast growing group of authors that are writing really really good things but have never really had the opportunity to get it out there because of the previous structure nicole, so you're you really even reaching out to some of them mm -hmm. i'm sorry exactly. Kate, I didn't cut you off. nicole your opinion on this as the romance writer well i mean i can tell you a lot about romance not necessarily about other genres but i know right now um for a long time, you know, there was a big push on the billionaire and the dom and all that kind of stuff. But um, what I do is I'm one of the people that uh, write to market. And so that means like I write what readers want to read. And so I, I go to a lot of effort to find out what they want to read so that I know what I'm what I'm writing. That's, you know, so that it'll sell. Um, but I just finished a couple of books. And so I'm looking at starting my next project and I asked my uh, Facebook group yesterday, what, what do y'all want me to write next? And I gave them some options. I did a poll. Billionaire was one of the options and pretty much the consensus was like, everybody's sick of reading billionaire. Like it's played out. Let's move on to something different. Um, the other thing is that I see that's really growing right now is the audiobooks. And I'll tell yep. you as a reader, I, I listen to audiobooks a lot more than I read anymore because I can listen while I'm getting ready in the morning, while I'm driving 
my nephew to school, I'm driving to work. Um, anytime I'm traveling, anytime I'm just doing something that doesn't, you know, cleaning or whatever I'm doing, I'm listening to audiobooks. Um, and that is a really growing um, group of people that are getting into those and really um, becoming fans of like narrators like that. So that's, that's the one thing I really see that's booming in my industry right now. I want to say, you guys, first of all, I've enjoyed everyone's opinion on that. Oh, this is a bad. I just wanted to add to that. Like, recently, I just had a a meeting with a very, a decently recognized writer. And for Brandy, getting their perspective on what indie people are right now, it's still not great. So it's going to take a minute. Uh, Paige, I love your input on the fact that they are working together. And uh, Nicole, always love input from the romance world. (laughs) Because you guys actually sell the most. I'm going to also say that they're going to, I think, I agree with Brandy, they're going to probably go the way of the music industry, the way of mm-hmm. television industry, because think about it, Justin Bieber, where was he? Exactly, exactly. Popular internet. support, exactly. Or popular. some other wonderful actors that we have now, where do they come from, from doing improv on YouTube or the internet? So yep, I right. have to really think that if you want to follow the trend and look how their careers have exploded, sold millions and millions of records and all this stuff. If you want to sell millions and millions of books, you might also want to try to find some indie authors that have their following. Also, though, when you come back to the whole thing of the indie author, we, we interview quite a few. So we also get like people who have had like, oh, yes, publishers come to me. But maybe it's one who actually, well, Paige can say this too. Uh, had like a publisher uh, thing in my hand and I was like this is 20% this is like 20 cents mm-hmm. <laughs> I made five dollars a book maybe we make five dollars uh, on the first one <laughs> it's like yeah um, exactly it, it's more really more, why am I going with you anyway. it, you're giving up a lot of control for not a yeah. lot of return now it's 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 also true that you know they have you know, the, the marketing and promotional uh, capabilities that uh, I personally couldn't begin to, to match. But at the same time, you know, it, it's, you, you sacrifice, I sacrifice, you know, time and energy to promote myself, but the control and the freedom I have make, to me, it makes it worth it. It makes it worth as, an, as a nonfiction um, mm-hmm. author. But again, um, as some of the other ladies were saying, hybrid uh, publishing is becoming more uh, relevant and of course with some of the heavy hitters some of the indie authors who've sold uh, millions of copies uh, they were actually able in fact I forgive me for not being able to remember his name but there was an indie author he wrote the uh, silo series the dystopian uh, series uh, silo and he was the first indie author to uh, strike a deal with a trad publisher where he said, okay, you guys, I'm willing to, to play ball with you, but I'm keeping the digital rights. Mm-hmm. That was groundbreaking, but it, it's happening. It's, it's happening. Uh, I, I, I think, think also when you're, when you're dealing with traditional publishers, um, they, they have a huge arsenal of resources for marketing. However, what's hap- what I, the trend that I'm seeing right now with authors is that the A-listers are the ones that are getting all of the time. The yes. B and the C listers are the ones that are kind of like, what do I do now? I don't have, you know, all of the support that I had before. How am I going to, you know, leverage th- these book projects to build my brand? Because I'm not on the A list. So I'm going to have to come up with other solutions myself. I believe what I remember one time I was reading about because I really wanted to place our series mm-hmm. with a publisher for a minute there. And I started reading about publishing and I recognized that they were like, you only get like five minutes to really pitch that that person's listening. Mm-hmm. And two and a half of those minutes are gonna go to one author and it's gonna be the A1 slot. And then you got the B and the C and they normally have to negotiate for those two. Mm-hmm. But this is gonna be the person who's gonna be in the front of the store. So if you're on the B and the C list, you can just forget it. No one's going out to a bookstore asking, you know, pitching this to them. They're not gonna go right. to them. And True. But anyway, we are on the writer section again. Well, we what are you guys reading? I'm, right now. I'm right actually now. reading the five love languages. 
I'm a little late to that party, but you know, it was, it was on sale at the bookstore. So. My sister's <laughs> a huge fan of that. You're going, you're really going to, to enjoy it. <laughs> so I've heard my little sister is actually a big fan of it too. It's one of the reasons I went ahead and picked it up. It's pretty good. Pretty good. Um, I'm, I'm actually reading uh, the, I'm, I'm doing the uh, whole sci-fi dystopian thing right now. I'm, I'm reading um, the Stormlight series by Brandon Sanderson. Um, and as Nicole said, audiobook is, is really, you know, what's going on right now. And if I'm, if I'm reviewing a book, I almost always have digital copies. But when it's my personal choice, it's always going to be audible. I just, I really love it. And um, I'm on the third book of the Stormlight series. It took Brandon Sanderson about three or four years to uh, kick that out. So thank you, Brandon. Um, <laughs> so I, I really jumped on it when it came out. It, it came out um, about three weeks ago and it, it debuted at number one. So I'm like, okay, that's what happens when people wait four years for your book. Mm -hmm. um, right, right but and it, it's 52 hours and i'm enjoying every minute of it nice. keep awesome. wanting more <laughs> Paige yeah. or nicole what are you guys reading um i'm rereading ask by ryan levesque um if you guys have ever read that book it's just about a, a different uh mindset on um the sales funnel and asking your clients or your audience what exactly they want and that they will tell you and how to use different strategies for like polling and getting that information. And the book that I recently just bought a bunch of copies of that I'm waiting for is Crushing It by Gary Vernercheck. That doesn't come out till January. So Ooh, I'm nice. excited about that. Nicole? So I'm, what I'm reading right now, I'm on book nine of a Patricia Briggs series, a Mercy Ooh. Thompson series. It's a paranormal romance, urban fantasy type series. And they're fantastic. I think they've been out for a while and I'm just now hearing about them, but I've literally heard like nine audiobooks in like the last month. They're really good. Wow. Nice. Wow. Okay. I will be emailing you for that information. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love fucking series. I, I can send you the first one for free, I think. All uh, right. And, and you know, as, as soon as I finish, I'm heading to the review uh, section. I, I love, as you know, I'm a review uh not but yes nine how many books are is the ninth book the last in the series no it's there's i think i, think I don't even know there's several more after that really? i was gonna say there's like 12 or like 15 of them or something yeah, like that. They're, yeah. they're really good they're all different and they're all really good okay okay yeah. Great. Great. i like it <laughs> so yeah so um you guys where do people find you <laughs> Well, I have a website, 40daywriter.com. That kind of makes it easy. <laughs> nice. Nicole? I'm, mine is pretty easy, too. It's just NicoleRLocker.com. Okay. Um, Paige? I'm at PageIngle.com, or you can catch me on Instagram at Paris by Page. Sarah? Um, I am on Amazon and Goodreads, um, or quite simply, TaraWoodsTurner.com. Uh, I'm also on Amazon. I forgot about that. <laughs> I, I am too. I think we I all have, I have so many different books, books, and I don't even talk about them. <laughs> In fact, I just released one called I Wish I Could Draw Like That where I walk people through my art from the, from literally from age four, my mom was like a hoarder. So <laughs> she shipped oh, me a box with um, drawings from like preschool and kindergarten in it and all the way through high school and everything. So I scanned them in and I put these, these together because I often get people who look at my art and go, Oh, I wish I could draw like that. And I'm like, well, honey, if you spend as much money and time and effort, as <laughs> I, you could draw like that. Oh, I, and so that's I kind of, the to, of the I need book. to check that out. Actually, my, my niece, she's 13. She just, two days ago, she just sent in her portfolio. She's auditioning for mm -hmm. a slot at Northwest Performing Arts High School. Oh, wow. And she's yeah. been obsessing over her portfolio. And I think it would encourage her to see, you know, oh, every, every journey begins with one step. Exactly. So, thank you for mentioning okay, that. So thank you guys for coming on. We really appreciate it. You can always find your ladies, Jade and Alona, 
at andwethought.com or Can the, I just say or one the, thing no we yeah. no I, yeah. I, no and the woman's cave.com why why i'm wrapping up you hear the wrap up I just want to say you can watch us on Channel 18 in California. Oh my goodness! You watch our TV up. show, please. She, she heard the rapper. It gives us paychecks. Okay, so <laughs> on the women's cave .com. <laughs> <sighs> And just remember that wisdom is all around you. If you're open to finding it and accepting it, so peace and love, you guys, from Winona and Jay. It goes like this. Bye bye. bye. <laughs> Have a great day.